we are giving the audience a kind of a story which is obviously far, far uh, better when it comes to being true to the genre. And still, uh, we are capable to translate it for the Indian subcontinent. So at least they are getting, through such collaboration, they are getting exposed to better quality horror, not succumbing to what they have been uh, given tried and tested method of, okay, this is horror. So changing their taste buds, so-called, with such collaboration is a very, very interesting thing. Oh, that's Sorry, I just wanted to kind of piggyback off of what she asked. Sure. Um, you as filmmakers, you've all been a part of horror films more than once. Is it more challenging because the horror genre is to be, you have to be able to create genuine fear or an atmosphere from the audience. Is it, is it more difficult in these days? Well, well I'll, I'll start with Praval's film. You know, it meets a standard that Mike and I talk about a lot when we're doing scary movies, which is if you didn't have the creepy, scary, you know, horrific moments, would it work as a story? Would you care about the characters? And the answer in this film, I think, is yes. And I think audiences will like it for that reason. But I also think that's why, you know, that's what broadens the horror genre. Because if you're telling a good story, you know, it's a, it's a, this is a very cool story about siblings uh, in a horribly traumatic situation. And if it weren't, you know, a, a, an evil mirror, it could have been that their father was truly crazy. And the actors play it in such a way that you can relate to that. And I think that's what makes things scary is because you can relate to the people going through it, which is why good filmmakers and good actors tend to broaden and, and elevate the horror genre to me. When it comes to India, uh, to add on to this, uh, most of the movies are star driven. Mm -hmm. So filmmakers, they are at a very comfortable stage uh, or space where they can capture it in any given way right. and it's bound to work because it's the star who is on screen. So as a horror, the concept is the star. So as a filmmaker, your craft comes in play where you need to understand the language of cinema. You need to be careful about sound. You need to be careful about the way you interpret it through the camera. So that is a boon for filmmakers. Especially for the horror genre, the movement and sound is, con is extremely uh, important. So how is the sound on this film? Good question. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I couldn't agree more that, uh, that sound design and, and music are, are where you build most of the tension uh, for horror. I, I, I thought you did a marvelous job with both. And because it is such a critical, uh, critical element, it's it's really it's exciting and rewarding to see it applied in its own unique way. Um, because the the soundscape of your film and the soundscape of my film are not the same, um, but they both work, and that's a pretty fascinating thing, you know, for me having having spent so much time on the soundstage and doing our design to to kind of see the fruits of your effort. Really so we'll be jumping from the street on the street. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think we I, from what I could tell, uh, Praval was more interested in in other things than jump scares, which is something else that I, I really appreciate. You might chew through the back of your chair instead of, instead jump, of jump through the, jump from the seat, but it'll still be a terrifying experience. It's a beautifully rendered film, and, and that's something that you know can can go the other way, and, and, and that's one of the first things, especially in a situation where you're looking at a, a remake or an adaptation, you know that, that can often kind of fall by the wayside. Um, but no, I, I, I thought the production values uh, were, were top notch. It's a beautiful film to look at. Um, the uh, the the shot construction, the rhythm of the edits, you know, are, are very impressive and, and also very different, very much their own thing. And so it was, it was very cool to appreciate those aesthetics considering you know, how different they were um, from, from the ones we had crafted uh, 
uh, and the scene where they overlap at times is also really fascinating. They're talking a little bit about um, some of the aesthetics between the two timelines in the film mm -hmm. and some of the challenges we both, we bumped into the same challenges trying to, to deal with that and, and seeing the different ways that we both tried to solve those problems was really pretty fascinating uh, from my perspective. Yeah. Do you always experience working with international uh, audience in the film? Uh, how was her experience coming to India? Was her first experience coming to India? Uh, for, for me, uh, boundaries don't uh, work when it comes to movie making. So actors are actors, the technician is technician. So it was the same way I worked in India, the same way I worked in London with this international crew. Uh, of course, in my previous films also, I've had international crew work with me. Uh, interestingly, why I based the movie in London was a question I would like to like, you know, answer without being asked. And that is, <laughs> 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 that is because- Why did you make I the movie in London? Thank you so much. So. <laughs> The point is, I mean, if I'm internalizing the movie, why wouldn't I base this in India? But uh, to, to put an Indian family, which are very emotionally attached to each other, usually, like any other family, but to put an Indian family abroad, it makes it much more uh, emotionally uh, like, you know, challenging for the audience because they, they don't want a yeah. family to be not in their own vicinity in some isolated place and in trouble. So the very thought of putting them not accessible through a community was the very thing I placed it in London. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, international actors came on board. Um, there was a character added, which was of a ghost, which was, of course, not there, there but not explored. So yeah, I did uh, had my own take on it. and. Uh, the end result, I think, is good. So your audience must shift a lot, especially in the, uh, uh, you know, out of, out of from India to North America and Europe, because in Europe, especially the four, fifth generation, which they are not typical Bollywood, et cetera, and North America is also changing. So how this audience, what would the audience would do, uh, tell us, you know, what would your message to this audience, which is the NRI audience in North America and Europe come to here uh, from India? Well, uh, they're very smart audience. Yeah, so uh, the very fact that this film is linked somehow to a beautiful beautiful film like Oculus is reason enough to watch it again. And you have two kids in here. So is it a family-oriented movie that we can come out with, seven, eight-year-old uh, uh, boy or girl? Or well, uh, kids happen to be there, but it's a horror film. So, <laughs> so I, I wouldn't know how the parents would take it, but yeah. If you're anxious to traumatize a child, yeah. <laughs> this, this could be a good way to go. It's a clean. It's a clean. Of course, it's a clean movie. Uh, clean, yeah. So uh, with the c when it comes to the so-called perception of a Indian horror, uh, unfortunately, there are a lot of baggage attached to it, which includes it could have shower scenes, it could have some sexual elements, but this is a clean movie. It's a, like a family movie with a lot of horror. So if parents are willing to let the kids watch it, uh, they're most welcome. Mm -hmm. There's nothing else other than horror. I have one question for, before we turn to Kiel. Um, we know there's been certain uh, music which has been released of the movie. And what did you think, and generally Bollywood <coughs> movies are associated with uh, song and dance or music or back scenes or whatever, apart from the sounds um, actually, which are part of the movie. What did you think, um, we haven't seen the movie, I know you guys have, without giving away the story, what did you think, how, um, and to me, any Hollywood film being made in Bollywood, to me, as an audience, when I go and watch it, it better have some music. I mean, that's how we've been brought up. If a film has no music, then, you know, what are you, a documentary? So what did you think of it <laughs> that, uh, was there any music? I know, Bisa, you have released the music. How is how is it embedded in, and how did it work for the film? Well, <laughs> well, there was no music as far as the songs goes, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I had to respect Mike's work, and. Uh, Wait, can I touch on something? Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <Okay>. So <laughs> one more, yeah. one more uh, uh, question is um, the middle. So the mm -hmm. entire movie is based on the 
middle. Yeah. And it says see your evil, which was also in in, 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 in Oculus. How did Prabhupada you come up with the name? In it was named Oculus. Now you named it Dobara. Mm -hmm. Why Dobara? Well, uh it's because I've taken a line from the Bible which says, what has happened once will happen again. There's nothing new in this world. So it is a cycle which is taking place. That's the reason Dubar. Okay. And what kind of sort of research material you have in this film? Obviously you have you know, a film, but besides your own research and stuff. Well, uh, I had Oculus. But you have Oculus, <laughs> you take some of your own uh, did you have a different take? Like I said, you had your own Raval symbol to be 